Hey, what is up guys? My name is The Channel. Welcome to episode 14 of Game Programming. Today we're going to take a look at the FPS counter, essentially. And um, I'm going to make this episode a quick one because I do not have time right now. So yeah, I'm not going to get into why I don't have time because I'll just waste more time. So yeah, just bear with me. Um, yesterday we took a look at actually making a timer to ensure that update only happens 60 times a second. And that's what it does, 60 times a second. Brilliant. Now to actually measure the time measure the amount of frames that we actually render and measure the amount of times that we update because that should always be 60 and we should be able to visibly see this on the screen. What we can do is, is add a few simple tricks. First of all, I wanna make two variables here called uh, frames. And this frames variable, I wanna set equal to zero. Remember this is initially, so initially we want, we want it to be zero. Frame, the frames variable is going to count exactly how many frames we have time to render every second, right? so that we can then work out, you know, how fast a game is running basically, because we can tell how many frames our computer is actually able to render every second. Um, now, uh, the next variable is, I'm just gonna call it updates, and updates is gonna measure how many times this update method gets called every second. So again, that should be 60, that should be 60 at all times. Now, to actually measure this, all I wanna do here is every time, you know, this is a while loop, right? So every time that it, it does this while loop, let's just add one update into it. Because right, every time that we do this while loop, it calls the update method. So right, the, updates, the update method has been called. Let's updates plus plus, right? What that, what, that, what that is gonna do is it's the same as updates plus equals one, right? Which is the same as updates equals updates plus one. That's exactly what it's doing. So it's just adding one number, it's just adding one, to our updates variable every time it does this. So then we can actually calculate how many times the update method is called, which should be 60 times every second. So I'm just gonna uh, simplify this again. Same, it's a similar deal with, with render as well, right? Render gets what gets called here in this, um, in this loop as well. And um, in the while running loop. So what we need to do is we need to count how many times frame, uh, render actually gets called and that'll be our frames per second. So this while running loop, right, it's happening as fast as it can. So how many times does this while running loop actually run every second? We can do that simply by counting again every loop. So every loop we will add one, one number, just, just the number one, just add one to our frames variable. So frames plus plus, all right? Hopefully you guys are still with me. Um, now the next thing we need to do, and this isn't something that we need, yeah, we we'll, we'll kind of do have to do it, is actually at the end of every second, so in other words, once per second, we need to get that data and display it somewhere and then reset everything. So in other words, what we need to do is set the frames and updates back to zero so that we can start counting from the new second again. And we need to actually, you know, display this somewhere so that we actually get the frames per second recorded somewhere. So, so to do that, we actually have to use our timer to do something only once every second. And to do that, we need like a sort of like a timer variable. So I'm just gonna make a new variable up here. I'm gonna make it a long as well. And I'm just gonna call it, um, I'm just gonna call it like timer. And this will be like our one second timer, right? And I'll set that equal to system dot current time milliseconds, okay? So remember, 1,000 milliseconds is one second. So if I go over here, right, just after the frames um, variable, all I'm gonna type is that if system dot current time milliseconds, so this is the current time at this iteration of the loop, if it minus our, our timer, so in other words, if the difference between the current time and the last time we actually ran this method, is one second, so in other words, if it's greater than 1,000 milliseconds, because 1,000 milliseconds is one second, then we'll do this. Now what's gonna happen is the first thing we need to do is actually add uh, 1,000 to our timer, so that this doesn't happen again. Because we're saying that as long as the difference between these two variables is actually greater than 1,000, which will be once per second, because every time that it is greater than 1,000, um, which is after 1,000 milliseconds, it's adding another 1,000 milliseconds. So this now becomes, you know, 2,000 milliseconds, basically. That is basically what's happening because this difference, this time of variable becomes bigger. So we're adding one more second onto it. So it's like saying, okay, at let's just say 9.01 p.m. because that's the current time. And I'm actually supposed to have an episode out by 9 p.m. But again, sort of in a hurry and don't have time. Um, 
Speaking of time, by the way, there's times. Anyway, uh, so at 9.01 p.m. and like 50 seconds, actually, what are we at? Like 24 seconds, right? At 24 seconds, we, we do this, right? It's greater than 1,000. And then we're going to be like, okay, let's make it equal to 25 seconds now. We wait a bit. We do this a bunch of times. Oh, look, it's 25 seconds now. Let's, this statement is true. Let's do what's here. Okay, it's 25 seconds. We'll add another second to it, 26 seconds, and so on. So this will happen once per second. That's all I'm stressing here. Um, and what we'll do once per second is what we basically need to do is display the, um, the FPS somewhere. Again, we don't really have to do this. You don't have to display it if you don't want to, but I will. So I'm just going to print it out into the console. So system.out.println, right, which will print one line into the console. Um, and I'm just going to type this updates variable, right? So we'll print updates plus, and we'll print, we'll print a string as well, just UPS, updates per second, um, comma, and then frames, and then um, plus a string that just says FPS. And you'll see what this looks like in a minute, if you can't already. And then one, one more important thing that we need to do is actually reset our variables back to zero. And I'll show you what happens if we don't. So right now, if we just run this, what we should get is, um, is this. So you can see right here what's happening. First of all, it's not exactly working. If I just stop it, what's happening is, again, we did not reset the variables back to zero. So what's happening is 60 updates per second, brilliant. And you can see that this is all multiples of 60 because we're not setting it back to zero. So it's not counting again. It's just adding the FPS onto, onto, our, um, onto our current variable. So it's giving us inaccurate results because it's just adding on to, for example, to, to the initial variable, which was 2,421 frames per second, which is roughly what our game is running at, at, running at at the moment, it's adding the next amount of frames per second to that. So you can see that we get basically double that. So what we need to do is reset the variables back to zero. So updates equals zero and frames equals zero. Simple as that. We hit the debug button and run this. You can see that we're getting, um, we're getting brilliant results here. So it's happening at roughly um, an average of 60 updates per second and, uh, and pretty good FPS here as well. We're nearing 3000. So, um, yeah, you can see that what happens is if it goes 59 frames, per, if, if it goes 59 updates per second, one loop, it'll actually jump to 61. The next one again, 59, 61, and generally staying at about 60. So that's brilliant. We're running at 2000 frames per second. We now have a way to measure this. Now, a few of you actually asked, you know, why did I put the J frame all the way up here? Why didn't I just put it into this static main method? And the reason I did that is because I actually uh, made, a, made a bit of a habit into putting this FPS counter into the actual uh, title bar up here. So what I can do here is because this, because this, this frame uh, field, this frame variable is actually, um, you know, throughout our whole class, it's actually outside of, it's not in a specific method. Um, over here in the run thing, right under here, I can simply type frame dot set title. And again, our title was uh, was rain, and I might just actually set that as as a final. Oh, I'm not going to make it final. Um, one second. Okay. So public static string title to that, and then what I'll do is I just yeah, I just close it. My bad. Then what I'll do over here is frame.setTitle, I'll simply set it to title and then plus, um, I wanna make a bit of a gap and then essentially just this. All right, it's gonna be as simple as that. So if I hit this up right now, what's gonna happen is you'll actually be able to see the FPS over here. Now the advantage of that, first of all, plainly, is that if I actually export this, obviously I'm not gonna be able to see the console unless I actually run it through command prompt or something. Um, but over here, you know, anywhere this window is, um, you'll actually be able to see the FPS um, on the actual title bar. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this episode of Game Programming. If you did, please hit the like button and uh, I'll see you guys, see you guys tomorrow with a brand new episode. And uh, actually tomorrow I've got something, something special in store for, for you guys. So I hope you, um, hope you look forward to that. Later guys. Thank you.